Hey everyone, this is Chris, and before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to let y'all know, uh, this is an episode my brother and I had been planning on recording for years, um, actually before uh, Rise of Skywalker even dropped, which you might be able to tell from the the display picture for it, uh, the thumbnail, I couldn't words. Anyways, uh, we've recorded this over this episode over Skype, and there are a couple moments where it might suddenly be silent. And then you'll hear me going, Dave. Um, and it's because the call did disconnect a couple times. Um, but it is still a lot of fun and really wanted to share the episode. I hope you all enjoy. I hope you're all being safe. Take care and God bless my friends. Peace. Hey, everyone. It's Chris and you're listening to One Cross Radio. And we're back, but not alone. Uh, for the first time in several years, we are back with my brother, my actual brother, uh, brother from the same mother, David Cook. Dave, how are you doing today, sir? Hi, everyone. This is uh, Dave. You're listening to One Cross Radio. And I don't remember everything else Chris said, so I'm going to stop trying to repeat him. Well, that's fair. Uh, yeah, no, I asked uh, I'm doing repeat. pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back, and this is an episode that we have been tangentially uh, planning for years. Actually, since you came on the show, think back in 2018, and we talked Star Trek, um, and now we are talking, I, I think, I, I, as much as I know you love Trek, I feel like Star Wars is... Am I off base in saying you're more of a fan of Star Wars than Trek? But Not like it's a comparison, but... I mean, I'm a bigger I'm a bigger Star Wars fan for sure. Um, I love Fair. both. Don't get me wrong, um, but you know, um, definitely, definitely Star Wars. Yeah, no, uh, Star Wars is like my first nerd love. Yeah, um, <laughs> and it's got that special place for me. Um, and it's kind of a broad topic on Star Wars today. We don't have any. Uh, any fixed uh, points, except for except for two, but we'll get to in a sec. Um, so here, I guess my first general question for you, sir, would be what what if if you could say what might be your favorite era of of Star Wars? Because it's it's had a bunch. It's had a bunch of them. Right. Um. So okay. Um. Probably. Okay, so overall, <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard because, like, it's very broad, right? It's seriously. Um, and I think I would say the Legends post-original trilogy um, timeline kind of up to up to the Yuuzhan Vong, uh, but before, you know, the, the Yuuzhan Vong, the New Jedi Order storylines— um, and I mean, largely that's just on the basis of like, those were the books that I read, um, you know, that were coming out when, when we were in high school and, you know, <laughs> like Thrawn, you've got the, the Thrawn novels, you've got the X-Wing novels, you've got, you know, I mean, there's some yeah. like absolute ridiculousness in there. Um, and, and there's some like not good stories too. Um, and so I mean, if I'm honest, probably a big chunk of it is is nostalgia versus, you know, um, it being any more special than any other Star Wars. Um, but like, you know, um, I guess that the legends after the original trilogy, um, you know, that 20 years um, afterwards is uh, is probably my favorite era. Um you know what? I, I I'll co-sign that a bit, although I think I'd extend it beyond just the 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 20 years um, in the timeline, because I also uh, I really dig um, the fate of the Jedi story. It was like the last nine. It was the last big story arc in Legends. Um, and then they had a one off novel, which I listened to and it was all right. I can't remember the name of it. That was um, the post Yuzong Vong stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, uh, Fate of the Jedi had some really... 
It had Abeloth, and Abeloth is, to me, dope. Um, but then also, I can't throw out the post Yuzong Wong stuff because you had, uh, even though there was, I think it was Legacy, um, Legacy of the Force or something. Um, I, I can't quite yeah. remember the full name of it. But it, yeah, there was the book line, but then also there was the comic line, which was about 120 years after A New Hope. And I think a good like 90 or so years after like Fate of the Jedi or so. Uh, right. And it's where you get, uh, where you get, um, why can't I remember his name? Um, Cade Skywalker and Darth Crate and the one Sith. Um, and it went in some very different directions, even though it's also Star Wars. So Sith, a Sith, an Empire, but you also get like the Imperial Knights. And they had some dope stuff in there that's some of my favorite comic Star Wars that I'm like, I can't, I can't throw it out. And I know others in the fandom might disagree, but to a degree, I thought Legends in some ways got better the longer it went. Um, and I think we could park here in Legends for a while, but just because the reason I say I think it got better is it wasn't competing with the movies anymore. Uh, so it, while it did have to retcon stuff to line up with, say, the shows. It wasn't competing with the movies as much. And then I recently listened to um, someone had posted unabridged versions of the the Jedi Academy trilogy, um, unabridged, voiced by AI. And I'm like, I think one of these characters, aside from the solo kids, actually makes it through anywhere here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like, <clears throat> yeah, and, and this is something that impacts, you know, not just Legends, but, but you know, new canon stuff and, mm -hmm. um, you know, TV shows and that sort of thing. And, and even movies to a certain extent is um, Han, Luke, and Leia, like, you know, that original trio. Um, the tri you could call it the triumvirate. Almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it like any story that's set while any of them are still alive. Um, I I imagine it's just I I mean they're super popular, right? So any writer, any storyteller, you know, um, probably wants to include them for for the simple matter that like, look, that's gonna make a lot of fans happy. That's what fans want to see. Um, but then you sort of get like, you know, it's like this like black hole pulling all the stories in towards them. And that's not necessarily a, yeah, like there's some solid stories to be told there for sure. Um, but sometimes when you get, you know, drop uh, 120 years into the future when they're all, you know, uh, died of old age or, you know, uh, old Republic era um, yeah. and, you know, jump back. Uh, 4,000 years before they're all born. And I I feel like there's a little bit more freedom there in terms of the stories you can tell and the characters and, um, you know, because Luke Skywalker isn't alive to be the most important force wielder in the galaxy. Um, and so, you know, you can sort of do whatever you want. Um, now, I, to a degree, I might, push back a little bit on that statement um only because i think it's an that's an issue more so with the movies whereas the books and i'm especially thinking of stuff around like fate of the jedi even though yes he's he's luke skywalker he's like the most powerful jedi um and he's doing feats that are unheard of um that are also <laughs> like ridiculous but dope um but at the same point by Fate of the Jedi, um, and even before that, like the the main arc before that, where um, Jason fell to the dark side, like they had had they had built up a lot of the supporting characters enough that there were chunks of Fate of the Jedi books where you're not in the perspective of Han, 
Luke or Leia. Oh. You're getting stuff from their kids, from Jason, from, Be- uh, from Ben, from Jaina, from a bunch of other characters. And that's something I thought they got really, really good at. And the only thing I've seen uh, property-wise that has done that very well consistently was the Clone War show and and Rebels. And Rebels yeah. because, like, well, we don't have really any Skywalkers here. <laughs> uh, but yeah. then Clone Wars, it could have been the Obi-Wan and Anakin show, but it was the clone show, and these guys just played pivotal roles and uh, the rise of Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, actually, if I were to answer my question about my favorite era, mm-hmm. um, at least, you know, restricting myself to current canon uh, with Disney, mm-hmm. um, actually, my answer is um, the time period between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. That, Interesting. You know, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's, you know, I mean, and and this was true before we got um before we got andor and obi-wan um you know i mean rebels uh great show fantastic there's also just been some great books um set you know in that in that time period which you know has been i mean i really enjoy them uh there's there's of course some thrawn novels um and anytime thrawn shows up he's my you know pro he's he's definitely my favorite villain after darth vader um so you know i'll uh i'll eat up any book with with thrawn in it um but like there's a tarkin novel that's quite good you've got um kind of two books about Jin urso um right yeah catalyst um and the other one, and then, yeah, it just <laughs> is the other one. The Rogue One novelization. <laughs> I mean, there is a Rogue One novelization. Um, Rebel Rising. That's the other one. Okay. Okay. Um, but it's it's just and and I mean, like I think part of it is and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Star Star Wars. I love me some Force wielders. I love me some mm-hmm. Jedi. You mm-hmm. know, it's great. Um. In the in that period between, you know, um, Revenge of the Sith and um, A New Hope, there's kind of two kinds of story that you can tell. Um, Mm. And one of them is about, you know, a Jedi or a Padawan or something who's trying to hide and and stay safe. And so that's where you get um, shoot. What's the game that came out? And we just Uh, had a second Jedi Survivor. Yeah, uh, Fallen Order and then Survivors, the sequel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Fallen Order. So, like, we've got that, right? And then the other one is a story that, like, doesn't deal with Force wielders. Um, and those are fun, too. Like, you know, um, I I legitimately, you know, enjoy a, a, a story set in the Star Wars universe um, in which, you know, no Jedi feature. Um, and, you know, that's not something that's necessarily as easy to do in a story in the Clone Wars, for instance. That's fair. That's fair. I, if if I'm limiting it to current canon and excluding legends, um, it might be the Clone Wars era for mm. me. As much as I do dig that in between that in between Revenge of the Sith and a New Hope era, um, the Clone Wars just has, and especially through through uh, Dave Filoni, but then some of the better new canon books, in my opinion, mm. have been the ones tying into the Clone Wars stuff, where you're getting more snippets of um, Kenobi and Qui Gon, and Qui Gon who's one of my favorite characters uh he really became like one of my like one of my favorite jedi when you look at uh, so many good what if scenarios mm. involve Qui-Gon because you're like he's to a degree what the jedi should be at that time and they're not um yeah and it's just like 
man, he not like he could have killed Sidious or something, but I don't think things would have gotten as far into the Clone Wars if people were listening to Qui-Gon. Um, but then also just that that downfall that ties it, which by itself the shows the shows and the current books do a really good job of painting that picture but then also when you tie in the high republic which has been mm. i haven't listened to phase two of it just because i know it's a prequel and i'm like i want to finish the story they started in phase one before, <laughs> I, before I jump back um so I'm really digging the High Republic stuff, but yeah. it also paints such a good picture of the Jedi and the Republic that it then makes the fall during the Clone Wars even more tragic. You're just like, yeah. oh, man. And um, so I, I just love so many of the stories there. And honestly, if if the Siege of Mandalore the last four episodes of the Clone Wars was released as a standalone movie, it would be tied in my first place for favorite piece of Star Wars, period. <laughs> um, yeah. Like the Siege of Mandalore is amazing. So it's it's just because of that. I'm like, I I think I have got to go with this. It's given us so many new characters, um, Jedi, non-Jedi. It got us to care about the clones. It got, like, it, got, it got you to care about so many things that I found some of the other stuff just didn't as much that... Sorry, I'm monologuing. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, so to tie it back to Legends, because I, I, in a way I want to park here for a little bit, just because Legends, I think, in a way, has a bit of a mixed bag reputation. Um, you have people who look back on it fondly, uh, people who look back on it uncritically, uh, but then also people who only look back on it critically. Um, so what would be some of your favorite aspect of, of Legends? Um, favorite story, some of your favorite characters, um, and then we can even talk stuff we don't like from Legends, but yeah. So, I, okay, so fa sorry, favorite stories, favorite characters? Yeah, no, uh, favorite stories, characters, uh, settings, aspects. Uh -huh. um, and by, by that, I mean, like, I think Legends did an amazing job and it's something i hope the the current canon of novels will adopt legends i think was amazing at course correcting um in the sense of whenever that post the sequels and especially because they did that like i don't know what else to call it but i'm gonna vaguely call it the room beyond the force uh from from legends like you know where friggin ezra was like walking around and the then world he, between like, worlds. This. yeah because of the world between worlds there's been people pitching like oh you should like oh they should just retcon the trilogy out like reboot it and i'm like nope that's not star wars's deal that's never been star wars's yeah. deal don't do that um and that's for some reason a hill i'll die on but <laughs> like when you look at legends it did uh, because at points it was competing with current media and the movies like you would get stuff like say i jedi that would retcon some of the stuff out of the original jedi academy trilogy so it could line up more with the newer canon that lucas had established in the prequel trilogy um and just doing stuff like that or in fate of the jedi incorporating stuff from the clone wars the mortis arc and other things like that like it was just always really impressive to me how it could course correct itself to line up with things. I mean, um, and still make it ongoing. I well, okay. I mean, uh, we, to continue talking about this, not about the question you posed. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> like fair. That's it, fair. in fairness. Like if you if you you know look at the at the movies, um, you know there's there's three trilogies plus uh, like three other kind of one off movies. Uh, you know, so you're looking at 12, right? Um, and I have on my shelf behind me uh, something like 30 Legends novels. Um, yeah. And that represents probably less than half 
of easily less than half of all the Legends novels that ever came out. Um, you know, like, I, I don't actually know what the number is, but it's probably somewhere between like 90 and 100. Um, oh, I'd probably more tremendous. once you once you can once you start incorporating like, you know, young reader books and that sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah. so when well, New like, Jedi like, Order itself had like what, 30 titles, something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, like there's a there's a volume difference there. Right. Um, yeah. In terms of like, well, yeah, I can I can tell a different kind of story here and I can tell a different kind of story there. And, you know, that one over there. Well, OK, thankfully it was really dumb, but it didn't affect the universe <laughs> in any major way. So we can just ignore it and sort of pretend like it never happened. Um, so like, you know, whereas, you know, it, a new Star Wars movie, um, in a, in a lot of ways, like it's, you know, it, it will be the 13th movie, right? Like whatever the next right. movie that comes out, it's going to be the 13th. Like it has, it carries a lot of weight via sheer, you know, by virtue of the fact that like there aren't a hundred of them, um, and and so like can they course correct yes um you know um i also feel like maybe it's also it's a little bit easier to you know quote unquote ignore some details that you um that were in a book on page 252 and you last read that book a decade ago um you know no one's going to really notice if you you know, change that detail in a later book. Um, whereas, uh, you know, gosh, I've seen, you know, the original trilogy, I don't know how many times and the prequel yeah. trilogy, a whole bunch. And, you know, so, so if you suddenly decide, if you suddenly kill off Luke Skywalker, um, <laughs> you know, between the events of the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy, well, like that's a little more noticeable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and so yeah, I don't know. Um, so an, a, another one I'll point to that I think did a, a very interesting job of, I'll say, course correcting or like recontextualizing is the the novel Outbound Flight because mm. then it was taking it, it took stuff that we had learned from the Thrawn trilogy but then because there was vague references to stuff um like Jorah Jor Seboth um and then Anakin and Obi-Wan's involvement but when the th original Thrawn trilogy was written like nothing of the clone wars was really known there was vague oh. descriptions from lucas there was so nothing, then yeah. so then when you get to outbound flight the novel it really recontextualizes the info we learned it gives us uh a good look at how joris joris seaboth would have been interacting with clone wars era jedi and it feels like true to the show obi-wan and anakin um but then also sprinkling in stuff with the Yuzong Vong and um, and Thrawn being aware of them and Palpatine being peripherally aware of them, which was something that got later added when they got to the Yuzong Vong. So that's where I mean, like, hey, it's not I, I wouldn't con consider anything the book's done to anything from the movies or anything retconning. But I'm like, I like it like that, where it's like, OK, no, we can update the story while still referencing what came before uh but then recontextualizing it to what's there now yeah. um and i thought and i found the fan base during that time was a lot more accepting of that um whereas now they're just like i don't like this take it away like reboot it kind of thing yeah yeah i mean i feel like um at least I I think it's a it's a, the the two factors there are one especially when we're dealing with like the novels that came out before the prequel trilogy got released like yeah. that was it that was all the Star Wars we had like we had the original trilogy which came out you know before you and I were born um yeah. and okay we had the special edition that got released um we had but the we had Ewoks, but we don't talk about Ewoks. Um, we had the Christmas special. We don't talk about that. Oh, and yeah. the droids cartoon, which right. we don't talk about. Yeah. But like, 
you, you know, like if you if you wanted yeah. more star stories set in the Star Wars universe, exactly, um, oh. you could rewatch the original trilogy for the five hundredth time. Or you could, you know, read this novel by, you know, Timothy Zahn or Michael Stackpole or whoever. And yeah. um, you know what? Like, even if it wasn't that good, um, it was a new Star Wars story, right? Whereas, yeah. like, now, you know, we talked about, like, what? There's some, there's probably more than 100 Legends novels um, and yeah. we've got stories being told in a bunch of different eras and all that sort of thing. And so I think part of it is just it it's become really easy to be like, oh, well, I hate this era and it's stupid, so I'm going to ignore it. And you can do that partially because, you know, <laughs> you've got so much else to choose from. And I mean, like, I have my favorite era, like, like anything that yeah. they release anything that they release i mean okay book uh show which is i guess really the two things that they would release or maybe a game set in the period between revenge of the sith and um uh a new hope like i'm there like that book i'm i'm listening to that audiobook on release day um right you know and and stuff set in the like you know, post original trilogy, approaching the sequel trilogy era. Like right now, I'm not super interested in those. Um, and that's not a that's not to say that people who want those stories um, shouldn't get them. Like keep telling yeah. those stories. Um, you know, um, but like I have, I mean, I guess it in some ways it's a good thing, right? Like I'm not super interested in that era right now, and I can you know, ignore it. Um, but I'm not going to say like, but I keep making stories in that era. I'm not going the uh, route of like, just get rid of it. Although I do have my issues, but whatever. Right. right. <laughs> we can talk about that if it comes up. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I, and I was actually going to say in like, in a way, I think that's something that I like with current Canon and it's something I recognize from legends because it's at, at one point legends got where you had different eras concurrently going on um you could visit like the knights of the old republic slash the old republic era if something uh if something in like fate of the jedi or whatever wasn't wasn't gripping you you could also hop to the future with legacy of the legacy of the force um or just legacy, I think um, you could hop there, and that to me that story was dope. But then you'd also have stuff going on in like New Jedi Order, or at the same point there was like more Clone Wars stuff coming out that's Legends, but referencing to the show. I'm like, yeah, no, that's that's good. Giving us options is is great. Because um, yeah, if there's a if there's a if it's only the one continuity. Or not continuity, but the one era going on. Like, just imagine how much more miserable Star Wars fans would be if the only thing we were getting was, say, the just the sequel era, which I'm open to being redeemed, but just out of the movies, they haven't done well. And if we didn't have, like, Mandalorian and Ahsoka um, or even Clone Wars Season 7 or Rebels to, like, hop to to enjoy... It would have been much less fun. Yeah. Oh, by the way, just because we've been talking about like number of books and that sort of thing, um, mm. because I have all of this pre-existing in an Excel sheet. <laughs> Naturally. I can tell you um, that there are uh, 81 novels that are set um, post Return of the Jedi. And 81. these are, these are, yeah, 81. And these are like, you know, like adult novels. Um, so Damn. not, yeah, this doesn't include like, um, you like, you know, the new Jedi adventures or whatever that, that were like yeah, the... shorter kids novels. 
Like that, yeah. those are not Jason on and, this list. Jason and Jaina Children Adventures. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, which you know. Um, so yeah, like eighty one. <laughs> yeah. And that's just post Return of the Jedi, uh, yeah. in Legends canon. Um, anyway, so. I will. I I do want to shout out one book that's set in the current canon, um, that took place, uh, um to set up the the sequel trilogy and in this case i'm like this is like it reminded me a lot of say the course correcting as i like to call it from legends but the book shadow of the sith um it was it took place before the sequel trilogy but it really sets everything up so rise of skywalker makes a hell of a lot more sense yes (laughs) um I actually just finished uh, working my way through that audiobook two, three days ago. Um, yeah. I was able, finally able to borrow a copy from the library and uh, like, it's pretty good. It's not um, like, it's not you know, perfect. the best story ever, but like, you know, I, it was enjoyable. Um, and, and I think it's stuff it like makes... that. Yeah. It's stuff like that that is going to eventually, I think, you know, I, like, because I'll, I'll tell you, with the Clone Wars t- television show, um, like, the Clone Wars television show makes um, both Attack of the Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith better movies um, by how they contribute to the story, by how you see things affecting the characters kind of over, uh, you know, over a longer scale, um, time scale. And so, you know, and and I mean, I think books can totally do that too. Um, where, you know, as they kind of fill in the story as they, you know, explain some stuff, um, you know, by giving us, a a plausible somehow for the return of Palpatine, (laughs) they can, you know, make uh, certain lines in movies maybe a little more digestible <laughs> so i i'm gonna i'm gonna be straight up palpatine surviving did not bother me at all i was hyped for it i was like no there's a precedent for this like it makes it's in line with his canon character that of course he try to survive we've had clones hell with to diminishing returns but we did have like there was a successful revival of palpatine in legends through dark empire but they went to that well a little bit too much so him surviving i had no beef with it was just that horrible line oh <laughs> oh no no I, like oscar i don't think oscar isaac was good with it i just like somehow i'm like you don't believe this either <laughs> like yeah, this no, this is I, what i have to say for it i mean but that, like that's the problem right like it's it's just you know it's first of all it's a terrible line it comes literally out of nowhere there's there's nothing in the Okay, we're just going to super quickly, you and I both don't particularly like the sequel trilogy. Um, and, let's, and, let's get this out of the way. I yeah, was thinking yeah, yeah. about that we're, too. Let, let's get this out of the way. Um, and I mean, I think really I have two major problems with it. And the first one is that it's not uh, a proper trilogy in terms of, not at all. you know, um, <laughs> the, the story doesn't intertwine. Uh, in a lot of ways and you have story directions that begin and then are completely ignored. And that sort of happens twice um, because some of the stuff that gets set up in um, episode seven is like, Nope, not doing that in episode eight and episode eight sets up some new stuff. And then episode nine comes along and it's like, Nope, not doing that. Um, and you know, and you're left with somehow Palpatine returned. Ugh. Um, and that's not that's not a knock on the characters because frankly, there's some solid characters in the sequel trilogy who, you know, I would like more of. And there were some, you know, ideas that got like picked up and I was like, oh, this could be interesting. It would be neat to see this developed. And then it gets, you know, dropped right back on the floor. Um Yeah. And so, you know, it's 
for, it doesn't tell a coherent story across the trilogy. Um, and Not that's my probably my biggest issue with it. Maybe my second issue. Um, one biggest issue is that um, for the most part, it it makes the um, 30 odd years between um, Return of the Jedi and Rise of Sky uh, largely irrelevant. Um, and and I say that as someone who is absolutely dying of happiness right now with like you know Mandalorian and the Ahsoka show in that exact yeah. time period. Um, and and yeah. it still good stories to tell. Um, but basically at the end of um, Return of the Jedi, the Empire is defeated are gone and there is one jedi remaining who is going to you know uh train new jedi and and rebuild the jedi in a new age um and that is also the exact same situation of the galaxy at the end of uh rise of skywalker um which means that in 30 years you know, basically there's like a little reset button on the galaxy. Like, oh, okay, we're back to exactly where we were 30 years ago. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, and that's not something that you can say about the story between the end of episode three um, and the end of episode six. Like, well, it's, the it's, galaxy it's, is in a completely different situation. And I don't, I don't think the the prequel trilogy has a lot you can criticize. Oh, sure. Um, and, and people definitely took it too far, um, I think. And I'll, I'll own up. I was at, at points, I was a dick about them. Um, so if George Lucas has ever heard anything I said, I didn't mean it personal, George. I still love you. I just didn't like the decisions you made or some of them. Um, but I also want to say it's not to punch down on the on the sequels just because it was actually interesting for me working in an elementary school this year. Um because I did see um, a number of kids, like if they saw me with a Star Wars hat, they'd be like, oh, that's cool. And they'd be talking to me about Ray and Poe. And as much as I'm like, oh, I hate the sequels. I'm like, hey, that's their gateway in, though that's their characters. You know what? Cool. If it gets right. them in and then they'll find other, like to me, the better Star Wars. Awesome even better. So yeah. I don't want it. That's where I also don't want to just toss it a lot because for an entire generation of children, this is their get in, even though you're like, it, there's so much better. <laughs> it's it, like that. It was really sweet uh, for me actually seeing how many little, little girls were like, Oh, race cool. And identifying with them. And I'm like, I right? can be a total dick right now and just be like, Oh, but a Mary Sue and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why would I rain on a child's parade right now? Yeah. I'm not going to. Um, Let's be clear. That being said, Ray is kind of cool. I mean, like, that doesn't like, mean I, that, like, like, the story in which oh, she features couldn't use some work. But, oh, like, so much work. But Ray, <laughs> Ray ended up, like, the performer, I thought was great. The character yeah. has a lot of potential, it just didn't get utilized correctly. Uh, my main issue with the sequel trilogy is it's not a trilogy. Um, there isn't, there's, I, there's barely a through line and it's just because like, oh, well, we're, we're setting out to make three of these. Um, but yeah, it abandons stories from the first one to the second one. And then the third one's like, well, we crapped the bed and a lot of people didn't like that last one. So let's hop back and fix that stuff up. And then things just kind of happen so we can get to a conclusion. Um, say what you will about the, the prequel trilogy. It had a thought out story and through line, whether or not it was executed to its fullest potential is a different discussion, but you can look at that and be like, yeah, no, that's a part one, part two, part three. It's not like, Hey, you want to know who your parents are. They're no one. And then actually you're a Palpatine, which I don't even hate. I think that's a dope idea. It could have just been executed so much better. Um, 
or yeah. as much I, as I, uh, sorry. <laughs> No, I, no, I was I'll, just going to say to build off of to build off of your thing, like 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 let's be clear: the original creature, uh, the original tre- the original trilogy features, you know, Luke wanting to get power converters. Um, Star Wars has from the get always had just like giant turds. <laughs> Like, really? Yeah. Who thought this was a good idea? Um, and, you know, I, station to get some power converters. Uh, like, you know, and I like and 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 Star Wars fans have been like we've been making fun of those since like, you know, day two. Um, yeah. And I think for me, what it is, is that yeah, and, and original trilogy had them. But the original trilogy had the prequel trilogy. A lot of those moments where you're like, "Oh, who thought this was a good idea?" But it also had, you know, a major overarching story that tied it all together, and and this made those moments that were less good a little bit more forgivable. Um, yeah. Or not forgivable, but just easier to like have a little laugh and then move on enjoying the story, and. Be- because of just what happened with how um, the sequel trilogy was was released, it doesn't have that overarching story, um, and it still has those very Star Wars moments of, gosh. <laughs> well, like um, so, just to pick on one character from the from the sequel trilogy, um, and there's a bunch of them you could pick on, to be honest, um, especially in Last Jedi, but. Uh, General Hux from the get-go just annoyed the hell out of me. Um, and I like I don't want it to be mean to the performer, but it was a bit of the performance, but then the characterization, and then also just like when he's giving his speech about the First Order and he's like screaming, I'm like, okay, you're trying to show us you're a big boy, but I don't buy you as threatening. Like, I'm, you're not intimidating. This isn't awe-inspiring yeah. in that evil way in any way, shape, or form. Like, you're not Tarkin. You're not Vader. You're you're not even, like, the general that Vader choked at the beginning of Empire. Like, I, I don't buy you. I don't believe you. <laughs> you're a kid screaming. Um, yeah. Which is harsh, but it, it's just... And then the journey they had Hux go on throughout the movies, where it's just like, by the time he dies, you're just like, okay... I don't care because you didn't give me reason to care about this guy. Um, but also, like, as much as I loved, and I will argue, like, yes, the the books are the books and comics and stuff will always flesh out the stories more than the movies do. Even though I'd say The Force Awakens is the best of the sequel trilogy, it also still I don't think did its job as a movie because. We're right back to A New Hope just 30 years later, and you did not explain at all. And as much as I, as a fan, will read the supplementary material and I will watch these other shows, it's a job (laughs) as a movie for a mass audience to tell that story for the mass audience to tell them that story and not assign them homework to do it. Otherwise is lazy. I mean, I feel like the thing is, is like, about it however if if there had been you know um a, a more coherent like or cohesive or just like you know a better a, a actual overarching story across all three of the sequel trilogy movies then uh, like you know what i would be like who cares like i wouldn't care that you know um the, the Force Awakens is basically a new hope set 30 years later. Um, no, no one would care. care, But like, <laughs> we would be like, whatever. It introduces it and it gets fleshed out more in the later movies. And it's fine. Um, but it's because the fleshing out didn't happen that yeah. we're then left with like, oh, yeah, that was, you know, sort of a little disappointing. Um, 
And and yeah. so I feel like it's one of those things where like I on the one hand I totally agree. Um and also <laughs> if the if the subsequent if eight and nine had been different, uh no maybe not nobody would have cared, but I wouldn't have cared. Um and but I will say though, because we've been, you know, talking about our <laughs> dislike of the sequel trilogy. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I kinda I legitimately I look forward to the day when uh I don't know, other stuff that has come out um both fleshing out the story set after episode nine um and also maybe you know in between uh those movies or leading up to those movies and where you know i will be able to better enjoy the sequel trilogy than than i'm able to right now i i legitimately look forward to that day um uh, it's probably going to be a while um but like you know i'm okay with it um, you know, and I don't know, um, like, you know, we'll, we'll get some good movie with, with Ray. Like I think we're supposed to, if Disney follows through on its promise, uh, yeah. and you know, seeing how she develops later, we'll watch episode seven, eight, and nine and, you know, came from and that sort of thing better. And even, um, Shadow of the Sith, the book that you talked about, does a little bit of that too, and helps me to sort of, you know, understand her and appreciate her a little bit more. Uh, and so I, and is part of me sad that like people who don't read almost every book that comes out and, <laughs> you know, um, aren't by that? Sure. You know, that's that's. That's not going to stop me from, you know, maybe one day enjoying them. One day enjoy. Um, yeah. I, I uh, like not to, it's not to punch down. Uh, it's just where I'm at. I don't know if I'll ever be able to enjoy the sequels as they are. Um, and the, the like uh, the Clone Wars shows made the theatr uh made the theatrical cuts of the the prequels uh much more bearable but then also there's fan edits that have made them to be really really good movies um but then with the sequels I've tried to watch some fan edits and it basically is down to one either mean spirited stuff or it's like I'm going to cut out the stuff that doesn't make sense or the stuff that's dumb and like there was a fan edit of the last Jedi where I'm like, this is also where you, you like, you can't edit the existing thing uh, by trimming around the stuff that does, that doesn't make sense because then nothing that happens in the movie makes sense. <laughs> Cause <laughs> even though it might not, even though like say the Holdo maneuver and ever like the treatment of Poe in that movie might be dumb, just cutting it out also then makes everything else that's happening with those characters dumber. And then also like, Oh, we're going to cut out the, the Finn with Rose subplot. Cause yeah, it was annoying as hell, but then it's like, okay, so then how did these characters get from on a rebel on a, on a resistance ship to on a, on a star destroyer? Like, no, you actually have to have a – there needs to be a follow-through here as much as I might not like it. The Last Jedi at least explain that stuff. But then also it's the things of – don't even if a book does it well, um, Sam Witwer, who will also stand up uh, for – for the sequels in the sense of he'll he'll give his honest opinion but he'll also be like look this is some people's favorite star wars and i'm not going to take it away from them some people have said like that like i needed that story with curmudgeon luke skywalker um but at the same point he's like i think that you need there needed to have been something where if you're going to take a character i.e luke and change him so fundamentally from a character who the last time we saw him was throwing down his weapon to save his father in the face of certain evil and most likely death uh, to suddenly in this movie, it's like, no, the Jedi need to die. And I almost killed my nephew. Um, and you do it off screen. There's I mean, something missing there. He didn't, he didn't almost kill his nephew. He decided he was going to kill his nephew, went to his room in the night, 
ignited his lightsaber. Sorry, you cut out. Could you re- could you repeat that? <laughs> Saying he didn't he didn't almost kill his nephew. He decided that he needed to kill his nephew. Went to his room in the middle of the night while he was sleeping. And then when his nephew woke up, decided, oh, maybe this is a bad idea. I'm going to call this off. Yeah. Point is, if you, like, you take Luke from the original trilogy, you have to tell how he got to that point. And that movie yeah. didn't. It didn't even, like, I don't even know if I could say what it did counted as trying. Um, Because I'm like, no, that's a whole ass story and a compelling one. (laughs) I mean, I was I was over. I was actually kind of because I don't know if they've addressed really like why what led Luke to to that decision. Um, And I had kind of wondered, actually, as I was going through Shadow of the Sith, if something there was going to touch on it, Um, you know, with just like because these visions and that sort of thing and there's like this kind of dark side influency thing happening and i was wondering if they were going to maybe you know like oh and yeah ben being bad and was like a little bit you know like and there was this dark side thing making you know him more erratic or something and and that's not where the story at all which is fine um but i was like oh like I, there was a there was a brief moment listen i was like is this where this is going because like ooh, that i i think i like this and instead it did other things which i also liked um yeah well and that was something i was hoping with shadow of the sith because it's like it painted the idea of like luke getting these visions so hey here's your story if you would plan this trilogy Palpatine is coming back in the third one. He's been back in the shadows again as he's like leveling up his clone body or trying to find one that'll hold until he can get into a powerful force user. But he still has his wicked dark side abilities. So, yeah, he's messing with Luke, the guy who killed him, and the child of Anakin, who he would have a deep hatred for, for betraying him. Like, yeah. He's in like he's doing all these visions. So Luke isn't getting rest, is becoming paranoid. And then it's like he's having more and more visions of a dark future. And then Sidious, tell me he wouldn't be like, I'm going to make you think it's your nephew. Of course he would. And then, oh, this makes sense now. This is why Luke, who's like exhausted and suddenly like that's a story that you could tell where if he's like, I was plagued for years by visions of like a rising darkness, even though we have peace. And then it's see like the more I trained Ben, the more the visions focused I, on him as that, like I came up with that on the spot sad, and I'm not saying it's greatly. perfect, but it's better than what we got. <laughs> um, Oh, anyway, I hear sorry, you not. Sorry. sorry, pardon. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. So, welcome to uh, <laughs> a new episode of uh, Dave. Now I can't hear you. Could you repeat that? <laughs> Dave. 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 Listener, I apologize. We are uh, we are recording over Skype, and sometimes it cuts out. Uh, so Dave has uh, it's cut out for a second. Hopefully, he'll be back in a moment. And I'll also put this warning throughout the episode and uh, at the beginning of it. I will call you back. As I, as I said at the start of the episode, um, 
We're recording over Skype, and sometimes that gives a little bit of issues. Um, Dave's in Ottawa. I'm in uh, I'm in Hamilton, so it wasn't just like, hey, I'll drive over and be there in like 10 minutes or 45 minutes. Um, so, sorry, right before it cut out, uh, you were saying um, welcome to a new episode of David Cook. It takes over Chris's podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Since I lost your audio, so I decided that I was just going to take over and uh, talk about what I wanted to talk about. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, where, where did it cut out for you? Uh, it cut out. Uh, you were saying something about Sidious. Um, yeah. You know, messing with oh. Luke or something. Yeah, exactly. No, it would. It was basically just like if Sidious is alive, which I've got no problem with, and he's meandering in the background, pulling strings as the master puppeteer that Legends did such an amazing job painting him as. Um, like, why not have Luke explain to Ray like he's plagued with these? He was at, the more he like as he was setting up the academy. He's plagued by visions of like a dark future, even though they're at peace. And then the more he trained Ben, the more it became like those visions were he was the cause of it. Yeah. Um, tell me that Sidious wouldn't do that. Be like, I'll make my enemy think it's his nephew. Like, of course he would. Um, and there, there, we have a storyline reason for yeah. why Luke almost killed his nephew um, and how he went from like, I'm going to throw down my lightsaber to die essentially for my father um, to, yeah, I'm going to kill my, my sister's kid. Yeah. All right. Um, we've talked a lot Sorry. about a yeah. thing we don't so, like. Yeah. Um, and... I do want to say, I, I did want to say I am really excited for that Ray movie if it comes, because I like that character. I like the sequel trilogy characters and I'd like to see how, well they can succeed outside of the baggage of those three movies i i am so excited um for that movie because if if it happens um i mean like okay we talked about what my favorite era from legends was well mm -hmm. ray is effectively set right the you know in that era in new canon uh, because yeah. of the whole galactic reset that happens at the end from from episode six to episode nine. Um, basically, like those are the stories like I would have been like, I want to hear the story about how Luke builds the Jedi Academy. Well, irrelevant. Doesn't matter. But I can get that story with Ray. Um, great. Give it to me. Like, I'm I'm so excited uh, for that movie when when they said that was happening. Um, I was I was all for that. Uh, hopefully it does happen. Um, you know, Disney, Disney likes to announce things when they're at the idea stage. Um, and sometimes they don't pr progress beyond that. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully this one, this one happens because I am all for it. <laughs> and, and this way we will also get, a, a live action yellow lightsaber beyond just a tease at the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I really like yellow lightsabers. I think they're dope. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to her having that in her movie because yellow lightsabers are dope. And preferably it would also be a double bladed one because it would make sense for Ray. Right, because she she's pretty um, effective with a staff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, we can. Uh, uh, we'll we'll move on from the sequels. I didn't mean to, uh, for us to get stuck there for a while. Um, okay, so to tie back to you, you've given your favorite uh, timeline from Legends, um, and to a degree, I'd say one of your favorite characters, even though he's now been adapted into canon and fairly well, oh, with, uh, and with soon Tom. to be in live action. Yep. <laughs> um, what would be? Uh, uh, do you have any other favorite aspects from Legends? Any particular stories or? I mean, OK, so uh, like obviously there was the, you know, the Thrawn trilogy uh, really enjoyed that. I remember really enjoying the X-Wing novels um, and I will do a shout out um, to the, the the current canon uh, Alphabet Squadron books. Um, there mm -hmm. are three of them. They're set up. Um, kind of as a trilogy and they actually work as one and they are fantastic. Um, and, um, you know, about like these, like 
you know, fighter pilots. Um, and it is set after um, Revenge of the Revenge, Return of the Jedi. It's a set after Episode Six, um, and it's dealing with, um, you know, the era, um, the final year of the war, really, between the Empire and uh, the Rebellion uh, before the Battle of Jakku. Um, and just, they're they're great. Uh, they're really good stories. You get, um, you know, people who are coming over from the Empire to the Rebellion. Um, you've got some complex characters, some really great stories there. And also just some, like, fun, like, fighter action. Um, you know, um, really enjoyed them. And part of the reason I really enjoyed them was because I remembered really enjoying the X-Wing novels um, when, mm. you know, from Legends. Um they were they were a lot of fun. Part of it too uh, relates to you know how I said I enjoy a story set in the Star Wars galaxy that doesn't revolve around a Force user, um, and you know that's that's what you've got here. Um, you have you know like the Force is a thing in that galaxy, and so you have one of the characters in those books like basically grew up like in a in a cult, and it, you know like. And a cult in set if it's in the Star Wars galaxy um, is gonna, you know, probably talk about the Force, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and so anyway, it just, you know, so, so it's not like they've ignored the existence of the Force, um, but it's just it's nice to get stories about the like, you know, the someone who's like a little bit more like a regular Joe, you know, I think as a fan, we watch these things and we always like to imagine ourselves as like Luke Skywalker or, you know, like one of the Jedi, right? Well, in, in an entire galaxy, there's like 10,000 Jedi. Um, so, so statistically, you know, we're, we're more likely to be like, if we're not, you know, uh, John who runs the diner, um, that the mechanics who work on the Jedi Starfighters come visit, you know, we're, we're probably, you know, John Starfighter pilot, um, who featured in one frame of the movies. <laughs> and, and so sometimes it's nice to get, you know, a story from, you know, the perspective of someone like that, um, who's actually closer to like, you know, quote unquote, the rest of us. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I, I zoned out for a brief minute just because as you, as soon as you said the diner thing, I instantly started thinking about how disappointed I am that we didn't even get a one-off episode or a book called Dexter's Diner, uh, um, just featuring Dexter. Have, have Obi you read friend. Master and Apprentice? I think it's yes, Master I and have. Apprentice. Yeah. I think that is Dexter fe Dexter features in that, I think. Oh yeah, no. I'm talking yeah, like yeah. a whole I'm talking about Oh, like I a, know, I know. Give me a mini series. Give me a mini series in Dexter's Diner. Or you know what? You know what? Have you played the game Overcooked? I haven't, no. Okay, so it's this game where you're like it's a little co op game. Um, I think you can play solo. I've only played it like once or twice, full disclosure, but like, you're like rushing to make all these different orders or whatever. And like, oh man, it would be, I would be all about like some little like top down co-op game, which is basically overcooked. <laughs> um, but like you're like in Dexter's diner and you know, <laughs> like you got to <laughs> hurry up and make them the milkshake for the, you know, Senator who just yeah. walked in or something. <laughs> um, all right. So I, if, I, I'm going to share some of uh, my favorite stuff from Legends. And I actually at one point uh, did an episode about it based on a blog post I wrote years ago. So I'm not going to repeat all of them. Um, but and I think some of them also, I'd say, reflect both the good and the bad of Legends, um, i.e. the Sun Crusher. I actually <laughs> loved the Sun Crusher. Um, now, yeah, it was definitely OP. It was definitely overpowered, and it had the quantum plot armor. Um, so it, it you could two. argue with it. 
Yeah. And so it was like, it, you can, I get the criticisms people have of it, of it being too powerful, but I, I'm like, if you're going to go a super weapon in the sequel trilogy, that's the one to go with. And to me, I'm like, that is like the, the pinnacle of like the, the reign through fear idea that the empire had, and especially Tarkin had where I'm like the death star you see coming yet. Like it's a, big ass thing it it it'll alert you when it shows up it can't just dip into your system unnoticed um but then with the sun crusher because it's a small one person fighter two person fighter i loved the idea of it being able to show up in a in a system you don't know when or if it's coming and when you find out if they let you know it's already too late because you've got like an hour before your 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 son supernovas. I loved the idea of that. It might not have been executed the best in the book, but out of the way way too many uh like galactic <laughs> like overpowered super weapons <laughs> that legends did get into cuz Palpatine in legends had a fixation on super weapons. Um the Sun Crusher one was my favorite. And then when we got it in the sequel trilogy, but it's just another Death Star now, I'm like, ah, oh, if you just did the other one, like how much more terrifying would that be? <laughs> like, uh, oh, they've got a weapon it, that can blow up our system. It's the uh, it's the closest thing to like that almost mutual assured destruction fears you had during the Cold War. Um so I, I loved the Sun Crusher, maybe not in its firm execution, um, but in I'm like, that's the thing to be terrified of. Like, who gives a crap about death, like a third Death Star or a prototype or the galaxy gun or like a super duper Star Destroyer <laughs> or anything like that? I'm like, that's the thing to be afraid of. Um, I also really dug um, the the solo kids. um and how they went different paths, um, especially because originally Anakin was going to be like a bigger deal. But then Lucas started working on the prequel trilogy and he's like, um, no, no, it's paralleling Anakin Skywalker too much. So that's why they had to change it up. Um, but also I loved the use on Vong. Um not necessarily in terms of execution eventually, because I think the Vong War encompasses something like 30 books out of the New Jedi Order, but it was the most fresh and newest thing to Star Wars in any of the stories. And I don't think anything else has captured that because it's, for the most part, always been the Empire or or, or an Imperial Remnant or like an Imperial offshoot and the Jedi are almost all killed. And then there's the Sith. Like this was, nah, we're going to have the empire remnant team up with the rebellion. Cause these things that aren't affected by the force for the most part, cause they're cut off from it. Um, and are from outside the galaxy. That's interesting. Um, and that's kind of, I hope, where a future show or movie series might go. Um, as much as I love the Vong, there is their new canon equivalent, the Grisk. Um, but I think it shakes up the stories enough that those are some of my favorite story or specific aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you like the Vong? I don't know if we ever talked about that. I, they weren't super appealing to me like as a i like i never ended up reading any of the the new jedi order books um with the yuzong vong i think i had one or two of them um i got rid of them at some point um i no longer do um you know i don't know i wasn't super keen on them as a concept um and so i just never got into it um Fair. yeah there you go. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's fair. I know I, I've seen they've got to a degree a bit of a mixed reception within the Star Wars fandom because for some for some people they were like this is this isn't Star Wars, um, 
I thought it worked. And again, I think Star uh, books wise, it also needed something new and it was something different for a while because the majority of Star Wars stories are rebellion empire yeah. Yeah, on yeah, and yeah. on I go. Um, so yeah, I really like that. Also to particular, uh, to shout out some other uh, particular characters, um, legends, Boba Fett was dope. <laughs> like legends, Boba Fett was friggin' awesome. Uh, it was like, oh, that character looks amazing. So we'll make him amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, of course, Mara Jade um, was a fantastic character. Ben Skywalker was dope. Um, then Cade in, Cade in uh, Legacy and any number of characters from Knights of the Old Republic. Like, there's some really great Star Wars characters that I wish were still canon. Um, I also have to shout out Shadows of the Empire because that was my gateway into the EU. That was the first EU book I ever read. Um, yeah, but it's, it's so bad. <laughs> it's not the best written, but I also like the period and the story. And you can get the stuff from the story outside of the main adult novel and where the writer didn't write things that well. But the... <laughs> I lost your uh, audio okay. again and write things well. Oh, it... Okay, I'm I'm still here. All um, right, awesome. Um, anyway, cool, cool. I I I mean the story was fun. I had no problem with the with the story. Um, it was uh the writing quality uh <laughs> not the best. Yeah, let's let's go with that. We'll be nice and generous and say that it was not yeah. the best written novel that has ever been published. Uh, I'll be nicer to it than I was the the sequels. What I won't be nicer we to be. Was, it was terrible. Uh, what I won't be nice uh, about is I, I think it's also fair to acknowledge as much as I love legends, um, there were some misfires. Oh gosh, um, what would uh, I, I've got one in particular I always like to point out because it's one that's in the thing that people hold up as the best of legends. So before I do that, what would you say are so, what were some of the things from legends that you thought were like, what? I mean, okay. I would say overall, and it's not a specific thing, but it's like the unending Hmm. stream of super weapons. Um, you know, uh, (laughs) there was a, um, if I can mention another podcast, um, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, which is a British uh, computer gaming (laughs) podcast. Um, They, on their episode where they were talking about spaceships, they they do this Mm -hmm. game where you have to like, it's kind of like two truths and a lie. Like you guess the fake. Two truths and a lie? It's similar to, the the game is called The Cavern of Lies and it's they play among the three hosts. Um, and it's similar to two truths mm-hmm. and a lie where the person is going to like, you know, say, OK, here are all these things. You have to find the fake. And he did like five different super weapons from Star Wars Legends. <laughs> um, and you had to find yeah. the fake one. And actually, they were all real. Um, and of course, as he's describing them, God, you're I like, you so much. Gosh, this is so bad. Like, why? <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, and at the end when he's like, yeah, no, they're all real. Yeah, that's fair. I haven't made any of this up. <laughs> um, You know, one of the other hosts is like, oh, Star Wars is so stupid. And I'm like dying of laughter because like, well, yes, it's still amazing fun, but also <laughs> your statement is entirely accurate. Um, And so that would probably be my biggest thing where it's just like, you know, um, and when I think about it as a as a side note, like the the Thrawn trilogy um, featured zero super weapons. There was no major, you know, uh, there was no new version of the Death Star. Um, And so, you know, a plus Um, there were some other, you know, like (laughs) individual books that I could that I could go. Yeah, that one kind of sucked or, you know, just wasn't. wasn't all that great or whatever um so yeah i mean there were there were definite uh there were definite misses there but probably the bigger one was just the 
I don't know, the pressure that storytellers felt to just always have, like, you know, a, a new, like, Death Star. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The I definitely agree that one of the weaker points is the like just the vast amount of uh, of super weapons. Um, I know some fans were like, there were too many wars. And I'm just like, it's in the friggin name, dude. It's not, <laughs> it's not Star Peace. Um, of course, it's a, like it's called Star Wars. There's going to be constant battles. Um, <laughs> it just might. They don't all have to be like all galaxy encompassing. Um, the over the over on over reliance on super weapons, although some of the ones that they did kind of add. Like I, I did enjoy it. like the the Sun Crusher was cool. Um, the Star Forge from Knights of the Old Republic one. I'm like, no, that's a dope super weapon because it's a factory. So mm. it it's categorized as a super weapon, but it's churning out your fleet like that's that's a good spin on that. Um, or the uh, the mass the mass shadow generator from KOTOR 2 um, because it killed it destroyed a planet but it was it it wasn't like hey i'm pointing a gun and shooting a laser at it or in stupid jurassic world fallen kingdom's case pointing a gun and shooting a dinosaur at you because that movie's stupid um <laughs> just, sorry um but with that one it was like no it's a thing that when detonated it pulls and makes the planet break apart from itself because the gravity becomes overwhelming and it draws the planet and things nearby it within to it so it's sending ships and everything plummeting to it but then also breaking the planet apart uh because the planet itself can't handle it i'm like that's actually a really cool idea it's not just oh we're gonna fire missiles through hyper like through hyperspace or oh it's like a death star but faster um, or anything like that. Um, so those three get a pass for me. Um, Palpatine coming back as a clone was, to me, made sense. It was really cool. I bought it with his character, um, especially earlier in the in the EU when they had established cloning as a thing that Jedi and Sith could do. So why not? Um, but how many times he had like another new clone body it was like it played to diminishing returns so i think that happened uh one too many times um and the thing i like to poke fun the most at is is from here uh the the thrawn trilogy the heir to the empire trilogy um as much as everybody like loves on that to me it's also got some examples of some of the wackier elements and the less good elements of uh of the of legends because you have Lu Ook, a clone Luke with two U's. Uh I don't know why Joris Sebioth also had two U's. Apparently they need to add an extra U for clone Jedi people. But then Luke Lu Ook was cloned from Luke's hand that fell down into the gas giant of Bespin from Empire with no explanation whatsoever. Like, no, you didn't what? see. There's a deleted um, scene so yeah. where these. There's a deleted scene from Empire Strikes Back where these two people are out for a cruise in their like little convertible car. You know, out for a nice evening. They're enjoying the sunset, and then just like a hand, uh, you know, falls on the seat. And they scream. <laughs> and then somehow it gets from them to the hands of cloned, mad clone Joris Sebioth. Uh, yeah. No, so uh, on the whole, I miss Legends and... Oh. Twelve hours. Yeah, no, it's it's true. It's to our benefit. I did see a while ago. I saw like a meme was going around on on TikTok, and someone was like, "If someone was like, I I'll pay you a million dollars to talk thirty minutes uninterrupted about something, uh, without any prep time, 
like, what would you talk about? And wouldn't that be challenging? I was like, no, I could just talk about Star Wars <laughs> Legends uninterrupted <laughs> for like three hours. Sorry. Give me 50 bucks and I'll do it. <laughs> Is the challenge that I have to like make it to 30 minutes or make sure yeah, I like, stop before I go over 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's like, do I have to contain it within 30 minutes? Yeah. Uh, Cause if so, <laughs> then I got to pick something else. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I, I legends I th is something I miss and I hope it's stuff they recontextualize. Um, and I miss a lot of that stuff being canon. Cause I loved a lot of those characters and those stories, but I'm also looking forward to seeing where things go. Um, okay, so as we are winding down, because both of us got to get going soon, um, I did have two prepped questions for you, sir. Um, one was, what would be, and I don't want to say your fantasy pitch, just because, heck, the one I have isn't even like my utmost Star Wars fantasy pitch. Um but do you have anything for that? Like, what's what's a, a loose idea of a project that you'd love to see you'd love to see happen? So um, I guess I'll I mean, I'll say right now. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought mid sentence. Um, like, I'm super excited about all the stuff that's coming out. Um, yeah. just, you know, hands down the, the Ray movie we've got great, uh, Dawn of the Jedi. I'm really looking forward to that. I am, uh, super, super excited for the, uh, I think it's going to be the television show set at the end of the high Republic era. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, you know, uh, the Filoni directed Thrawn movie. Um, and so it was funny cause when you first mentioned that to me, I'm like, what's even left i'm getting everything and and i realized what's left um is the old republic era um and interestingly i think it was only like as of recording about a week ago um that starwars.com kind of put out a timeline with like a little blurb and so in new canon uh in current canon um, this is the blurb, the official blurb, the canon blurb for Old Republic, the Old Republic. The Republic is founded among the worlds of the galactic core, and the Jedi Order emerges to protect it. A schism within the Jedi leads to the creation of the Sith in this epic era. Mm. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yeah. I want it. <laughs> like... Yes, please. <laughs> I want all the parts of that. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm looking at it. Uh, so at Celebration, um, they released a uh, a timeline photo of Eris, yeah. especially as they were talking about the movie. So you've got Dawn of the Jedi, and that date's unknown. And then the Old Republic, which that era ends technically in a thousand bby which for anybody who's listening and wants to know bby is before battle of yavin um that's how they they do it anything before yavin is bby and then afterwards i think it's ady um after ABY. death star oh, pardon i don't know i think it's aby after the battle of yavin let me check uh, also, as a random super nerdy side note, I am relatively certain that ABY and BBY are technically actually like how they record dates in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> or at least ABY is. I don't know about uh, BBY, but. I'm actually Googling uh, BBY and. I think it's. Yeah, it might be ADY or oh no, it is ABY after ABY. Battle of Yavin. Yeah, yeah. it's before Sorry. the Battle of Yavin and I, after I, the Battle of Yavin. After Battle of Yavin, yeah. Um, so here, let me get back to it. So it was, um, yeah, you've got Dawn of the Jedi, Old Republic, then the High Republic, which is a hundred years, um, or ends a hundred years before uh, Phantom Menace, and then Fall of the Jedi. Time is Phantom Menace through Revenge of the Sith, Clone Wars, Reign of the Empire, Revenge of the Sith through New Hope, 
Age of the Rebellion, A New Hope Through Jedi, The New Republic, um, Era, which is Return of the Jedi Through the Force Awakens, um, then Rise of the First Order, Force Awakens Through the Rise of Skywalker, and then Rey's kicking off New Jedi Order. And I actually love that they're going with that title. Just because I'm like, that's another way you can embrace stuff that is beloved from what came before. Just hopefully it won't be a in name only kind of way. Like you'll actually take some of the good lessons from New oh. Jedi Order. To quote Ahsoka, um, there's truth in yeah. legends. Huh, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so you're uh, like basically for you, it's old Republic stuff right now. Give me, give me, yeah. That's especially like so that so that blurb um is was something that was posted on starwars.com in relation to that timeline but it only got posted up i'll say within the past two weeks um, right and like i read that blurb and i was like give me that give, j just like i want it and i want it <laughs> um i'm just yeah. thinking a scene from the simpsons where barney's won at the film festival uh about and it's a touching story about his alcoholism but he wins a year's supply of duff beer and he's just like hook it into my veins <laughs> uh, yeah yeah not you with the <laughs> with this yeah, um like i i mean every part of that sounds like fantastically interesting to me yes please yeah um, yeah yeah um so for for me, it now I'd loosely set it around. It could in my head at first, like, well, yeah, that's just an era, and then it can undo some of the again, not trying to beat up on it, but I think could salvage some of the, if not the films themselves, just the era they're in. Um, a show along the lines of Clone Wars or Rebels set in the timeline of uh the the sequel trilogy. Um but I would love a project, um, be it this show or something else, of course, headed up by Filoni, um, because he is the fan whisperer. Um, but then also I would have it with uh, writing and story, other story contributions with um, Sam Witwer and Freddie Prince Jr., who, uh, who has been a writer for other things, but he was... Kanan Jarrus in Rebels, he's got a very good mind for Star Wars. Um, but then Sam Witwer as well. And all three of them, I think, have such a good mind for classic Star Wars, but how to recontextualize it with the new canon as well. Um, that I'd be like, yeah, they like that's my Star Wars like production dream team. Mm. Those three right there. So any Heck, any project. It, it could be a, a, a Jar Jar solo adventure. And I'd be like, if it's done by Filoni, Whitwer, and Freddie Prince Jr., I don't care. I'm in. Give it to me. <laughs> Hook it into my veins. Um, so it would be a show or a movie with with those three, like, really being the brainstorming behind it. Um and the final question I have for you, sir, because I would be remiss if if we didn't. Um, and it's not again, everybody, please hear us out. These are our opinions. And as much as I'd argue that I'm right, um, this is subjective. Others are going to like other movies more than uh, certain movies more than me. And I can tell you you're wrong, but it's a subjective opinion. Um so also, it, let's be clear. Chris is only right to the extent that he agrees with me. So, you know, get out. there's a limit. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and, and this, like, again, as much as we might have been uh, very critical of the sequel trilogy, I wouldn't take it away from people and younger kids who are a fan of it. If that's their gateway into this franchise that I love, that's awesome. It was you something that got them for, in that didn't before. For the um, record, you don't even have to be a younger kid who likes them. Like, I don't care. No, like exactly. them. A plus. If what, um, exactly. If, if it's what gets you in, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, we've mentioned that there, are t there have been 12. And I forgot about one entirely. Um, <laughs> and, and for good and, reason. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, at one point I was talking with a friend. And they're like, oh, you should include the, 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 the holiday special and the Ewoks movies. I'm like, no, those, that was a TV special and TV, like made for TV movies. I'm not. Cause then if. Well, also if they're, 
they're technically no longer canon. So so there's twelve yeah. canon movies. Twelve um, canon movies, yeah. and also if I was going to make any exceptions, it would be for the the Siege of Mandalore arc because I'm like. I'm convinced with how that thing was paced that that was intended for a theatrical release because there's pauses for audience eruption. Um, there's it plays like a movie at certain spots. And I'd be like, no, that's a movie. And it's number two. It's tied with number one. But since I can't do that, we're going with the official 12 theatrical releases. Right. How would you rank, rank the movie, sir? We'll, we'll go worst to best, I think. OK, so. Um, <clears throat> Before yes. before I rank that, for the benefit of the listeners who aren't um, crazy super nerds um, like you and I, um, yeah. in chronological order, uh, the 12 movies are as follows. Yes. Um, episode one, The Phantom Menace. Episode two, Attack of the Clones. Uh, then we have The Clone Wars, which was an animated uh, movie. Uh, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Then we have solo a star wars story yes yes. i think is the full name of it uh rogue one episode four a new hope episode five emperor's empire strikes back episode six return of the jedi episode seven the force awakens episode eight the last jedi and episode nine rise of skywalker yep so those uh, are <clears throat> so Kick off the list, sir. What's your what's coming in your last place? What's in, number twelve? In last place, I have Clone Wars, which yeah. um I have watched yeah. once, will certainly never watch again. This is not to be confused with the TV show Clone Wars, which is uh overall absolutely fantastic. Um, certainly weaker in the earlier seasons. Um, but it had seven. Um the movie though is just um yeah it's Not it good. is yeah there you go it's bad uh yeah it's, i mean really it's... it 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 feels like about three episodes of a of a children's television show that while it does tell sort of one continuing story uh doesn't do a great job of it um and is uh certainly worth uh just skipping entirely um yeah. You know, but don't uh, skip the show. Yeah. No, uh, a farting hut baby uh, does not a good movie make. Um, and even though, like, Ahsoka is very annoying in that, that's something uh, Filoni was like, oh, no. Like, she's she's rough in this and the early seasons. But you'll love her. Just stick it out. And I don't think anybody who saw when they saw the Clone Wars movie, because I remember so many people, myself included, being annoyed by the Ahsoka character. Little did I know she'd become one of the one of my favorites and a lot of people's favorite yeah. characters. Um, but yeah, the Clone Wars movie, dead last. Uh, if if I can reference another uh, another sci fi property, I'd put. The Clone Wars movie and the bulk of season one around the quality of uh, next gen season one of, of Star Trek, um, where, yeah, some decent ideas, but not really good execution. Um, what takes your number 11 spot, sir? Uh, episode nine, Rise of Skywalker. Interesting. Interesting. OK. Yeah. My, uh, I actually have the last Jedi for my number 11 spot. All uh, right. So, so spoiler alert, last Jedi is my, uh, number 10 spot. So right above that, um, <laughs> that's where rise of Skywalker is for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, uh, whatever it's, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> we, we've beaten them up enough. I'll just say that the rise of Skywalker pisses me off less than the last Jedi does. Um, like the la uh, rise of Skywalker has so many issues, but there are more little things I like in it. Um, than the last Jedi where last Jedi, I can't think of much that I actually enjoy in that. Movie. I, I think for me, it was, there were some interesting ideas that were, you know, advanced in Last Jedi. 
Um, and I wanted to see where they were going to go. Um, and they got thrown out in with Rise of Skywalker. Um, and so because of that, I'm like, well, you threw out the ideas that I was kind of interested in seeing where they would go. Um, and yeah, like anyway, <laughs> right. Rise of Skywalker was to the last Jedi. What the last Jedi was to the force awakens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sort of. Actually, that basically is sort of the order that I have. <laughs> so it's, uh, uh, but Rise of Skywalker did have, um, like, there was a couple things in particular I really liked. One, um, it was one of my, even say what you will about how they brought him back. I actually loved Ian McDermott's performance as Palpatine in Rise of Skywalker because it was less cartoony than his, uh, aspects of his performance in Revenge of the Sith. Um, cool. So I was like, I dug that. I also loved the hell out of the the scene between Han and and Kylo um in the rise of Skywalker um I was like that was a fantastic scene and it was like Harrison Ford acting and you don't get Harrison Ford the actor that much so it was a really heartfelt nice scene that I I dug um yeah, it just didn't piss me off as much, basically. Um, all right, so we've gotten our 11 and 10. What do you have at number nine? Force Awakens. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and this is where it was It was a very enjoyable movie. Like, I came out of the theater from that movie super excited, absolutely loving it. Um, if I watched it as soon as we finished this call, I would – for the most part, enjoy it. Um, but it is, again, it's the, this isn't part of an overarching story. Um, and that to me kind of, you know, drags it down. It's, um, for me, it's just, it's made worse by the movies that followed it, not made better. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it ranks relatively low for me. Um, and, and for the record, I quite enjoyed that. So I will say also, like, you know, Chris, you've already mentioned how, like, look, if you um, have a, a different preference order than we do, that's totally cool, uh, 100%. And also, let me be clear, with the possible ex – with the, with the exception of the Clone Wars, uh, <laughs> um, every single movie that we have or will talk about is a Star Wars movie. Um and, you know, Star Wars has a very special place in my heart. Um, and so, like, you know, it's like even if I say, oh, I don't like it all that much, this is relative to Star Wars. Um, there right. are probably loads of quote unquote better movies that I will admit are actually better movies. And, you know, I might rather watch a, you know, a star Wars movie that I rank less highly. Um, so I, I'm going to say that too. Like, you know, just because I'm saying, Oh, it's number nine, like, you know, doesn't mean that, you know, like if I were to rank it against every movie ever released that I've watched, um, you know, it, I don't, I have no idea how far down the list it would be or not be, but like, you know, <laughs> Star Wars is going to be near the top of that list. Um, yeah. Even the ones that I'm not as fond of. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I have, I have a very different number nine. My number nine is actually solo, a star Wars story. Interesting. Um, and it's just because um, solo in a way is a better movie than it has any right to be. When you look at, it's very, very troubled production. Um, but it didn't, I don't think, lived up to its potential. And there's stuff from it I like a lot. Um, I dug the dude playing uh, playing Han. I dug his character. Uh, young Lando was cool as well. Um, oh my Han gosh, yes. The Han and Chewie dynamic was, was dope. Um, but then there was, for me, there was also like 
I don't want to say quite a pile of little things because there was also a bunch there. I'm just like, that's, I don't, the dice wasn't a thing. Stop trying to make the dice in the Millennium Falcon a thing. Stop trying to sell me stuff. I'm buying it already. Um, <laughs> changing up the, like changing up the Kessel run was uh, like to how they had it though. Visually cool. I, I'm like, why do you need to change that? Um, also, the uh, it's weird that the Empire's theme music is canon in Star Wars now, uh, even though it was like, a, on one hand, you're like, yeah, it's a cute little scene. It made me laugh where they're watching an Imperial recruitment video and the Imperial March is playing. But then at the same point, I'm like, but at what point? How does this work? It actually, even though it's cute and funny, it takes me out of the movie. I'm like, there's there's no explanation for this. Um, and as much as it was cool to see, say, Darth Maul show up in it, it also took me right out where it's like, we're going to hammer home that it's Darth Maul by having him ignite his lightsaber for no purpose whatsoever, other than to tell you that it is this character who it obviously is. Um, yeah, I, I the co-pilot droid with Lando, I, to me, it was a joke character, but it, it didn't, didn't gel with me. There was aspects that I liked, but also just as many things that took me out. Uh, but I'll say in comparison to the, like the previous three, they didn't actively anger me. Like the solo decisions. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're harmless, but it didn't live up to the potential that it could have. And it was an issue. It had a lot of issues and trends that I find movie studios and other, other properties go through where they're like making a big deal out of everything where you're like, yes, I know this is a franchise that sells me toys. That's star Wars bread and butter. But there was a lot of it in solo where I'm like, this isn't a thing. Stop trying to make this a thing. Like, do we, why does his last name get generated? Because, oh, you're by yourself. So solo, there's enough stuff throughout it that takes me out that I'm like, eh. Um, so even though I, there's aspects I like, there's a lot of stuff that it's troubled production doesn't help it. That's fair. Um, um yeah, so it, and it's not to beat up on the movie, and I get why other people like it less and why other people like it more, but it's, yeah. Um, what's your number eight, sir? Uh, my number eight is Attack of the Clones. All right, we got, the, we got the same one there. Uh, number eight for me is as well Attack of the Clones. It's the weakest of the, the prequel trilogy for me. Yeah, um, I have like... I have nothing real like, OK, I mean, look, no Star Wars movie is perfect. There are bad things to say about all of them. But like there's there's nothing here that I'm going to go like, yeah, that was upsetting to me. You know, uh, there's the stuff that we make fun of, like Anakin, not, you know, with his like, I hate sand line and that sort of thing. But like, you know, we are we are basically at this point as of my number eight. Um, you know, we are, we are now firmly in the camp of, uh, like, I enjoyed this. Um, you know, I, 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 well, okay. I enjoyed parts of the sequel trilogy, but like, you know, <laughs> I, I have a little bit of a hard time without adding qualifiers to the end of the statement. I enjoyed this attack of the clones, yeah. no qualifier needed. I enjoyed this movie. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so this is clones. where we are on Sorry. the list for me, by the way. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. Attack of the Clones is one I, I'd i say I still like, but it's out of most of them, uh, especially out of the prequels. It's my least favorite. Um, and it doesn't have amazingly I, fun pod racing. And it doesn't well, have the, like the like the death of the Republic and the turning of Anakin Skywalker and, you know, all the stuff that uh, Revenge uh, of the Sith has. The, the, the other issue I, the other issue, well, the other issue I have with it is if you like remove the context that the Clone Wars show provides, if you just watch it as a movie or you just watch the prequels, 
as a move as like a trilogy it feels some of the things introduced feel really inconsequential um christopher lee should never be inconsequential and dooku <laughs> being set up as the new big bad at the end of this then to be killed off right away in the start of the next movie it's like I got you got me hyped for this character throughout this movie who you in the next movie you told me is not worthless, but not not the not the thing that you set up for me here. Um, It didn't answer some of its own questions that the Clone Wars show later did. Um, So that's something that I can find fault with as well. And also taking Obi-Wan, it it took the Empire Strikes Back approach, but I didn't feel it did it as well, where you're separating the characters so they can go off and grow. But you're also taking your best actor in the movie, Ewan McGregor, uh, off to the side. And you're like, hey, um, we're not even going to have somebody in here to read lines with you. We're going to have you emote off of a tennis ball hanging off a stick that we're just going to put in in post later. Um, so it's some of the structural filmmaking aspects of it that I act that affect the overall movie for me as well. Um, and I, I can't stand Obi-Wan Kenobi's hair in this movie. I hate it. It's awful. It's a mullet and it's garbage. Um, so it's, it's some of those things, but there are as much as people rip on Hayden in that movie, uh, his scene where he breaks down in Padme's arms about, killing all the sand people is dope. Uh, there's some really, really cool visual aspects as well. So as much as I dig it, it's, it doesn't feel it. It's not a necessarily a well pulled off movie in terms of like filmmaking craft. So that, that lowers it down for me. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry. I didn't mean to monologue. Um, what's your number seven? Uh, my number seven is solo. Um, Okay. You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, look, it's a it's a fun heist movie set in the Star Wars universe. I'm good. Fair. <laughs> like, Fair. Fair. like, sign me up. Give me give me more movies like that. Like, honestly. Um. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. No. Fair. Fair. Uh, my number seven is actually the Phantom Menace. Okay. Yeah. Um, What keeps me from putting it higher and Mm. like there there's in a way I feel mean putting it here, but I I love Qui-Gon. I love Obi-Wan. I love Darth Maul. The pod race is cool. Um, And there were more practical sets than the rest of the prequel trilogy combined. Um, so it's got those favors for it. But it doesn't do everything well. Um, I didn't always like the characterization of Anakin. Um, I didn't like the characterization of the Gungans. And it's not to beat up on Jar Jar, but Jar Jar was very much like, hey... Even though you could argue a lot of Star Wars is kids' movie, are kids' movies, I'd be like, they're kids' movies in the sense of they're PG, but they're, like, parents can watch them and get something out of it. I'd be like, Jar Jar is kids' movie in the sense of it's out of, like, a child's TV show. Like, it'd be taking Dora from Dora the Explorer and popping her into Indiana Jones. Like to me, that's how much how jarring it was. And it's a lot of other smaller things that take me out of it a bit where it 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 keeps me from enjoying it as much as I'd like. Uh, There is, again, a fan edit. I'm not sure if it can be found, but the anti cheese cuts of the prequels, it makes Phantom. If I'm if I'm just doing it with that one, then Phantom Menace might be in my my top six, um, top five. But. The theatrical cut, it's just there's the other little things uh, that, that lower it down for me. Terrific score, though. I mean... As oh, well. Here's here's the thing. Phantom Menace contains, uh, I mean, the, the fight with Maul. Yeah. Which, therefore, means it contains 
the duel of the fates, like the piece of music. Um, and also, I, I mean, I remember going through a phase where I was like, oh man, those pod races, they were so dumb. Um, you know, what a dumb idea. Like I loved them when they came out. And then I went through this phase where I was like, that was stupid. And then I remember rewatching, you know, when I finally like rewatched the prequel trilogy, um, probably like 12 years ago now or something. Um, and I was like, this is so much fun. Like, Oh, it's amazing. Um, I like never understood fun. how I never understood how the pod, like that, that characterization of them, like pod racing is dumb. Like, bruh, it's not Tashi station and power converters or anything from the sequel. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, that, but yeah, th they so were anyway, pod race pot. It's, it's got the duel of the fates music piece and fight and it has pod racing. It's great. Oh, We're good. Oh, if it, Fantastic if it was based movie. on lightsaber fights, it would be, this would be top three. Um, all right. So what's your number six? Uh, my number six is episode one, the Phantom Menace, which I just said. Uh, fair. Okay. So, oh, right. My number, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my number six is actually the force awakens. Okay. Which I felt all right. really, uh, it, edges out most of the prequel trilogy for me. Um, not because it, it, what it came down to for it was the filmmaking craft behind force awakens is fantastic. It's as much as I might not like the story or it, the rehash nature of it structurally as a film, it's, fantastic it is a well made well oiled film it doesn't have some of the stuff that takes me out like of say attack of the clones um it doesn't get ruined by its follow-ups for me um it's disappointing that it didn't get to be what that movie set up but that movie by itself is really, really dope. I can actually watch The Force Awakens in isolation. And criticisms and all, it's still a really feel-good time. Um, and it's a, like it's a more, and I'd argue, more well-put-together film than Attack of the Clones or Phantom Menace. It doesn't have some of the structural issues that those ones have, in, in my opinion. So that, yeah. that's kind of what edged it. Uh, so what is your number five? Uh, my number five is, uh, episode three, Revenge of the Sith. Same Z's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Revenge is default. Like the breast, the best of <laughs> the best of the prequels. Yeah. 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 Sorry, just gonna. I was gonna skim by that I accidentally said breast, but uh, it's what happens when you think of best and a word with PR or with an R sound right after. Um, no, it's 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 got its flaws, um, but it's also really solid. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. it's uh, it's a great movie. Um, really enjoyed it. Fantastic. I mean, okay, again, Star Wars. I can say that about uh, almost every Star Wars movie. <laughs> Yeah, it probably has my favorite lightsaber fight, because um, even though you get like swashbuck swashbuckling ridiculousness of swinging and uh, swinging on wires <sighs> and then surfing on lava, um, the story through it like that, um, that emotional story through it overrides that. And I'm just like, I'm here for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, exactly. Yeah. It's it does a it does a good job of establishing you know why what's happening is important to the characters and therefore exactly. should be important to us. Exactly. It it does. I it, not to beat up on it. It does have issues. It has some of my least favorite acting in all of the films. Um, like how 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 do you get that performance out of Natalie Portman, who's a terrific actress, but. Anyways, anyways, it's not just to beat up on Natalie Portman because <laughs> she's awesome. You're you're number four, sir. Uh, a New Hope, episode four, A New Hope. OK, I was wondering if it if it would be this. Just curious. What's your number three? Uh, my number three is Return of the Jedi. 
Okay. All right. I thought we'd have the just them in reverse. Here, finish uh-huh. out your list. Uh, what's your two and one? My number two is what I assume is your number three, which is Rogue One. Um, and my number one is uh, Episode Five: Empire Strikes Back. Um. So I actually have Rogue One as four. Okay. And then yeah. A New Hope as three. Um. As much as I love Rogue One, and I love it. And it's, it, to me, the best of the modern Star Wars films. Um, its first half has a bunch of planet jumping. So it's just like, oh, we're on a tour of the galaxy. We're here, now we're here, now we're here, now we're here. Um, and it's like, okay, but but why? Also, there's performance choices from Saw Gerrera that I don't necessarily like. Um, I don't, that actor's normally fantastic. I don't know what voice he was going for or what the Gogolith does um, or anything like that, where it's like, it erases your memory, but he remembers stuff. He just kind of mumbles a bit. Um, and if I took out the amazing, if I had to take out the Vader hallway sequence, would I love that movie as much as I do? Would it be in my top three? Not really. Um, so that's where I'm like, it's a fantastic film, but it has some issues. And I think A New Hope had the tighter story focus than it did. I mean, so that's where, it, for me, it edges it out. I, I think, uh, so, I, like, I'm not going to lie. I, you know, um like I had to consider whether or not Rogue One was actually my number one. Um, Interesting. I, and I mean, like I, the thing that makes that movie so good is that it makes a new hope, a much better movie. Like mm. if you and I had been doing this ranking uh, before um, Rogue One had come out, then Revenge of the Sith is is beating out A New Hope on the list for sure. Um, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I love A New Hope. It's a great movie. But, like, it's sort of, how do I phrase this? Like, it's, of all the movies, like, not a lot happens. And obviously there's a fair bit that happens in that movie, and it's great. Um, but... When you see Rogue One, just A New Hope becomes a better movie um, by virtue of having watched Rogue One. Um, And, you know, like you understand all the work that went into R2-D2 having those those plans saved on him. And he's, you know, being like (laughs) tossed down onto the onto the planet and. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so good. And, and I think honestly, it's what makes it such a great movie for me is the fact that it tells its own really good story. Um, and you know, if we hadn't seen, uh, a new hope, then probably all of these brand new characters, like the fact that they all, you know, die, um, you sort of know going into the movie, you're like, well, I'm going to try not to get too attached to any of these guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going in, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I, I can't care about any, well, not can't care, but that was a struggle rogue one had when I saw the trailer for it. I'm yeah. like, how are you going to get me engaged? Because I know none of these people are in the original trilogy. And this takes place like 10 minutes before a new hope. Yeah. Um, um, it, but I mean, it, it manages to, like, you know, yeah, no, when, it, does. When, it does a good job when 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 they're, you know, holding each other on the beach, watching the explosion approaching, you're like, oh, you know, and um, you feel it. And like it, it, you know, it's like little touches and stuff like the fact that like we see Red Five uh, get, you know, shot up. So then when we watch A New Hope. Luke gets assigned Red Five. Well, why did they have space in the fighter squadron? Well, because this guy, you know, and and so like I don't want to say that it's it's really good because it's a story that isn't self-contained, um, you know, that exists purely to boost this other movie. Because what I think it does is it tells a very compelling story, um, 
and it does a really good job telling it. And while doing so, it makes, you know, the movie that's going to follow it chronologically so much better. Um, and so I love it. And it's it's my number two. Uh, but I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> definitely considered slotting it in at number one. Um, I I like it a lot. And one of the other things I loved with it was adding showing like, hey, the rebellion does get its hands dirty. There is this shady aspect to it. And that's the first time we've had that in Star Wars, because the whole time it's been like, no, the rebellion are the good guys. But also it's like, no, they're. They would have to do some shady stuff as a rebellion to a galactic, like to a tyrant thing. And I liked that it didn't make any, it didn't cover that up. So I really dug that. Um, But I, as much as I like it, I, even though out of the original trilogy, A New Hope is my least favorite, and I found they got the. Jedi and Empire were better because Lucas was spearheading the stories, but they also had other directors to get better performances out of the actors. Um, and you didn't have as much McClunky dialogue. Um, <laughs> you, I still really dig the the simple story in A New Hope. For me, it's not a, not a lot going on. I find the pacing of it really, really good. Um, like even though, yeah, we jumped to a couple different locations, it carries us through good. Well, I never understood the criticism of the Death Star, like the, the destruction of the Death Star being a plot hole. I'm like, how, to me, that's, that's not a plot hole. You don't need a storyline justification. If you've done enough things, like if you've, I don't work with machines, but I, read about stuff where it's like yeah one thing one small thing that you don't think of could mess it up uh, mess something up horribly so i'm like i don't need a back door to fill a plot hole and i'm not reducing rogue one to that uh just responding to that general audience joke um but i we also get alec guinness obi-wan we get james earl jones as vader we get tarkin we get the death star it sets it up and running so well and even though it's got his flaws i love the movie unapologetically uh so for me the, the my top three are the original trilogy uh three is a new hope two is jedi and one is empire strikes back um jedi what stops me ranking it lower then a new hope is one the performances uh as much as i will make fun of the ewoks um it also has some really compelling stuff with Luke and Vader. It has one scene and it's the only scene in the one of the few scenes I'll say in the entire franchise, which I would describe as perf- like perfect uh, from the moment Vader says that uh, like gets in Luke's head about turning Leia and then he yells never. And then the John Williams score swells and it's like the darkest music Williams ever recorded to where Luke has just like rage beat down Vader. Everything in that is perfect. Um, And it's encapsulate encapsulates the story from the first three so well that we're at that moment. And it's got a bunch of rest of good stuff and an excellent space battle. And it doesn't bother me that we've got a second death star because it's different enough from the first one. Um, It's not like, Oh, we're doing another trench run. We're doing another uh, thing. It stands out and it does a lot with the new characters and the old and Jedi is awesome. And, Empire is Empire. Uh, It is the best of the Star Wars movies. To me, the only thing that would challenge it, in my opinion, is if you did the the Siege of Mandalore as a film. Um, Just how it splits up, how uh, the characters and advances them, how it advances the story, the reveal with Vader, um, the score. And I'd argue this is where, music-wise, because... If you've listened to classical or even John Williams talk about it, A New Hope, as much as I dig a lot of the music in there, it's basically uh, hoists the planets. Yeah, hoists. I think it's hoists. The planets. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then Empire Strikes Back is, and even though you like in the planets, you didn't get, say, Leia's theme or the Force's theme, a lot of the music you did. Whereas Empire Strikes Back, I'm like, that's where musically Star Wars becomes Star Wars. I mean, you, um, you listen, though, and like Venus, the, the like Venus from Hulse the Planets, like you listen to that and then you listen to Leia's theme and you're like, OK, right. I see the influences there. You listen to oh, Mars yeah. and then you listen to the Imperial March and you're like, OK, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> I see what you you're what? doing. You know what? Fair. I, I the Mars one didn't pop to mind. It was at, at one point after listening to the planets, I like a couple weeks later watched A New Hope, and I was just like, "This is friggin' the entirety of the planets." But <laughs> you get what I mean. Whereas with Empire, even though there might have still been some of those references, it wasn't like, "Hey, this is the the blueprint and like ninety yeah. percent of the music." Empire, some of those threads might still be there. But I'd be like, that's where musically the franchise became what its musical identity is. Yeah. Um, Empire is, to me, borderline perfect, and it's my absolute favorite. Yeah. Oh, it's a great awesome. I mean, I listed it number one, too. It's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, sir. So we got to get uh, we got to get going. Any any final words on Star Wars before we wrap? Um, it's great. It's fantastic. It's so much fun. Um uh andor is an amazing show and should be watched and if any of you are listening and maybe you just started watching ahsoka and you're like oh this is fun and you have only ever watched star wars live action yeah uh, you're gonna be lost <laughs> no, no 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 that's not what i was gonna say check out oh. the uh check out the animation like um clone wars uh definitely the first season is is i would say weaker um you know but uh, like Rebels is 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 fantastic. You're, you're going to have to set your expectations. Like on the one hand, these are shows that are designed, you know, primarily for children. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not really good stories. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I, um, you know, I, I, I talk with people and they they'll watch all of the live action stuff and they enjoy it and they just haven't kind of you know, dip their, dip their toe into animated. Um, and honestly, uh, it's really worth checking out. Um, oh, if yeah. you haven't, um, I'll follow up with that and just say like, the reason I said lost, um, is I've heard it described that the first few episodes of Ahsoka, uh, if you're no, not it, familiar with <laughs> rebel season yeah. five, <laughs> yeah. If you're not familiar with the character, um, and you've only seen her in in the Mandalorian. Like this is a continuation of Rebels. It's if you fa it's Rebel season five. It's Clone Wars season nine. <laughs> like it's. it's I I like would. I'll more say more Rebel sequel than a Clone Wars one, but it's if you, to get a better understanding of Ahsoka, there's essential stuff from Clone Wars. Yeah. Hey, hun. Jill's walking down. We're just wrapping up. Um, and it's worth watching. Like it, yeah. there's some fantastic storytelling, um, you know, that, you know, there's stuff that, you know, you're going to laugh. There's stuff that you're going to like be really sad for two weeks after that episode. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And I would, I would say as my final thing, um, I've sung the praises of the siege of Mandalore, the final four episodes, <laughs> um to me that is the best uh piece of star wars period since the empire strikes back i'm talking all the you i'm talking books games comics whatever the, uh let alone visual medium like it is just utterly fantastic but you don't get there without the the previous seasons watch clone wars Give Rebels a shot because Rebels is is dope as well. Um, and Tales of the Jedi was also friggin friggin awesome. And I'm looking forward to a second season of that. Um, all right, sir. It, this has been years in the making. I'm glad we got to finally do this. And at some point you will be showing up on uh, my show with my boo Christian, the Radio Arcade podcast. I'm not sure what we're talking yet, but he really wants to do a show with you and I'd love it. It's fun doing these episodes with you. Um, 
And listener, I, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, and God bless, my friends. Peace. Bye.